Okay. We have to, uh, I'm going to give you some information on a pregame meal um, with regards to competitions and so forth. So <clears throat> pregame meal can be provided, uh, just depends on the time of the game or the contest. So uh, it can be breakfast, lunch, uh, or like an early dinner, depending on if the game's at, say, uh, I don't know, 8 p.m. Or you could actually consider it to be more of a late lunch. Uh, so let me give you, I'm going to detail some items here with regards to timing for uh, not only timing for the meal, but actually content. So... Uh, so the lunch or dinner, it should be a complex uh, carbohydrate. Meal should be so it should be a complex carbohydrate. A uh, meal um, or a part of the meal, big part of the meal should be a complex carbohydrate to give you fuel. So let's go over some pasta choices. <clears throat> so I'll give it, I've given it to you. So spaghetti, uh, linguine, fettuccine, angel hair, any of those particular types of pasta are um, usually... Uh, a very good pasta to use. You can use any different type of pasta, it's fine. Uh, but these pastas typically seem to be the type of pasta that most people uh, most people enjoy. The second option or second source in the meal should be a protein. And the protein, obviously the function, this is a function here, you can just write this up here, is to build muscle. Uh, this up here is obviously a function as well. And that function is fuel for carbohydrate. Now, the function for building muscle, um, it's not necessarily something that we're too concerned about with building muscle um, for the for the, 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 the game. It's not like we say, hey, you know, we need to build muscle for this particular match. Uh, the function of the protein is for uh, really repairing a muscle uh, after the contest. Uh, or we can say, or sorry, rebuilding. muscle after the contest so during a competitive event muscle breaks down it doesn't necessarily break down to where it becomes injured or we're talking about injury we can't talk about injury too if someone gets injured the protein is really helpful obviously to help repair that in a uh in a in a way that's that expedites the the process but a lot of times muscle uh, gets broken down um, during the contest. So uh, to be able to have a protein source prior to the event and then actually a protein source after the event is a very helpful for repairing that that muscle that's broken down uh, during uh, during competitive matches. So uh, protein, so options, chicken. Uh, seafood, salmon, shrimp, etc. Um, a 
uh, we're going to add C in here, okay? C, a third one. Uh, could be a, a ground turkey. And we're going to put here no. Fatty meats. Example, uh, ground beef. Like hamburger meat. Right. Uh, fatty steaks. All right, so you, you don't want to eat um, uh, hamburger meat. Um, uh, you really don't want to eat taco meat uh, to, to have... Um, uh, burritos with meat and cheese and beans and all that before a, a match or, um, you know, uh, tacos with meats and, and beans and cheese and all that's really not an ideal uh, protein source prior to your, your competitive event. Um, and then uh, you don't want to have hamburger meats and things of that nature as a protein source. Uh, uh, prior to the event because um, of the, the fattiness that occurs and it, it does not help with gastric emptying and, and, and uh, gastric um, uh, uh, overall feeling of just gastric, uh, uh, gastric feeling in general, I should say. Plus, uh, if you have tacos or burritos or um, hamburgers, uh, anything like that prior to a, a competitive event, you're missing the carbs, right? So the carbohydrate is is not in there. The tortilla or the the bread is not enough carb carbohydrate to provide you for your event. Um, so you really need to have uh, the majority of that food is a um, is a carbohydrate source like a pasta. All right, three, salt added, sprinkled. Sorry, this should say sprinkled in here, sprinkled. If no protein added. So if you don't add a protein, so let's just say you go pasta only, you would have to add some type of salt into that pasta. So let's just say you don't, let's just say you, you don't create the meal for yourself. Uh, let's say it's provided to, say you go and purchase it. 
there's not a way to know whether the salt was added into the water when it was created, unless you were to ask, hey, to the who and we that's not going to happen. We usually don't ask the people, the, the restaurants that prepare it. Um, hey, did you add is the salt added to the water when the pasta is prepared? Um, so typically we don't know that. So it's possible that salt's not added to the water when the pasta is prepared for you. And so if you don't know that, then you wouldn't know if there's any salt in that pasta at all. So you'd have to add salt to that pasta, sprinkle it on uh, prior to your meal. The reason why protein is so important prior to the meal is not necessarily because it rebuilds muscle and so forth. It does. That's one of the reasons. But the biggest reason is the protein has a lot of salt in it. So every protein source is just filled with salt. It's it's that's just a part of the, the meat itself. It has a lot of salt. So because it has a lot of salt, it's extremely important to eat it because the salt is what provides you, uh, is what provides the body with the sodium electrolyte that's required to prevent dehydration from occurring or to help prevent that. So when we go back, we go, okay, you need to drink a lot of water. You need to be able to hydrate or you need to be able to hydrate with other sources. You need to be able to do those types of things. The water and or the Gatorade that you drink prior, say you just, let's say you remember before we said, if you provide yourself with the appropriate electrolytes prior to the event, remember we said, you only are going to drink water all the way up to the event, right? It was how many liters of water was? It was three liters of water, 24 hours prior to the event. In the water, there's absolutely no electrolytes in it unless you drink an electrolyte-based water. But we don't teach, hey, drink an electrolyte-based water. The, the, the teaching is you just need to drink water. So you drink that water three liters prior to the event. And we said, you don't, you're not going to need any fluid up to 60 minutes during the event. If you did what you needed to do prior to the event. And also in addition to doing what you need to do prior to the event is not just the water, but it's uh, consuming the right foods that contain the uh, correct amount of salt. So if you're doing this now and you're adding in the salt or you're sprinkling it on or you're cooking the pasta with the salt because you can put salt in the water as it's being prepared or you're consuming protein with your pasta, then any one of any three of those is going to ensure especially if you consume the meat, that's going to ensure that you have enough electrolyte or close to enough electrolyte to be able to not have to consume the fluids that you're going to have to consume during the event. And it's going to allow uh, some a football player or whatever to, to get through a competitive event without having any issues. Um. It's going to give them the best chance. Now, we don't take into consideration heat. Now, we don't take into consideration environmental conditions. Like, are you playing on turf that's another 15 to 20 minutes hotter than the, the weather? Um, are you, you know, playing in pad? What, you know, what is your sport? Does it take into consideration all that? Or did you consume enough fluids considering it's going to be 100 degrees outside? Like, all of that. Did you do enough? So this is just another component of making sure that you're doing enough or your athlete is doing enough. So the protein added is really, really important to ensure that that salt is consumed prior to the event. So if no protein is added, then you're going to have to make sure you add salt to that, that carbohydrate meal.
It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't want to be too salty where it tastes bad. Salt it, see how it tastes. Okay, it tastes a little better, good. All right, at least we have some salt uh, on there. Uh, four, there should be some type of vegetable. Carrots, uh, green leafy vegetables, right? A salad option is suitable. Now, if it's, it should be small, a small salad. So you shouldn't take this salad, make it big, and then use that large salad as your primary source of fuel in your meal prior to the event. Because if you do that, this is not a solid carbohydrate option. It has carbs and it has some protein, but it's a, it's a not enough. So when we get into like the timing of it, if you just eat this as a, as one of your primary options, no pasta, no protein, uh, you're going to get hungry again prior to your event. And that's not going to be uh, good for you or good for the athlete. So it should be a small, small salad in addition to your, um, your other uh, more robust uh, sources for that meal. There's another option we're going to add. I know it's not on your sheet, um, but it's on my sheet. And so we'll just add it here. Just add it here. Uh, we'll make it five. This is option two. Rice uh, and meat with uh, vegetables. It can be white or brown rice. Uh, either option is suitable. Now, white rice is uh is an unhealthier option for you in terms of like we 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 don't suggest white rice because of its glycemic index, not with athletes in particular, but just in general with regards to like people who are even my age. I'm 49 now, and you know like it, it has a tendency of uh, helping add. It's more caloric, has a tendency of adding more because of its glycemic index not digesting as fast, uh, making you feel more sluggish, adding um, potentially if you eat too much white rice, adding more fat to your body. Um, so typically we say white rice is not is the better option. It's better. It's not as good as brown for a lot of different reasons. But when it comes down to athletic performance um, and pregame meal, we say, look, the white rice is going to be okay. It's, it's, a, it's a heavy starchy food, just like the carbohydrate sources are. Um, so we say white or brown rice, whatever you feel is best or whatever you like better, consume it. Or whatever your, your athlete likes better, consume it. All right. So B, this is timing for a lunch-based Pre-game meal. The pre-game meal we just talked about is a lunch or a dinner. It's not a breakfast. Uh, so timing for a lunch-based pre-game meal. This is for a seven-
p.m. game time. Okay, so the reality is, the reality is we're really, sorry, sorry, wait a minute, 47 p.m. game time. Yeah. And then the reality, so a 7 p.m. game time, just make sure I have that right. The reality is, it's actually a 6 p.m. game time. And here's why. Because you have to minus one hour or the warm up. Because you're warming up an hour before, uh, we have to consider you need to be ready to go or the athlete needs to be ready to go and prepared and fueled correctly for the 7 p.m. start time. But already 6 p.m., if it's an hour warm up, typically that's an hour warm up for most sports is, is customary. Uh, we have to be prepared already knowing that fuel is going to be st is start to going to be utilized for that warm up. So the meal should be finished. A minimum of three hours. Before the event. All right, so general guidelines. All right, so general guidelines, three to six hours before an event is when the meal should be consumed. Now this varies per person and per type of event.
So the hour really depends on uh, the person, the type of event. Uh, usually a three to four hour window is, is a really good time period. But it can go as long as five or six. Okay, so three hours before the event, uh, the meal should be finished. And four hours before the event, the meal should be started. So that summarizes three to four hours prior to the event, the meal should be planned. So the timing of the meal and the content of the meal is extremely important. And this ensures that you have that the athlete has the fuel required to get them through that event without feeling hungry or without uh, losing to allow them also to uh, maintain the performance level they can based on energy levels. Don't want them to lose energy levels because uh, they didn't consume uh, the amount of food that they needed. They didn't consume the type of food that they needed. And they consumed the food at the wrong time. So the amount, the type, and the timing of the food is, is critical to ensuring uh, you are able to establish and maintain the level of energy and performance that the athlete needs. So let's talk about an example. So the time, the time of the meal for this 7 p.m. game time should be a, ideally would be a 2 p.m. start with a 3 p.m. finish. Now, remember, when we talk about the timing of it, we're talking about it not being a 7 p.m. If the 7 p.m. starting, if the game starts at 7, we're considering the 7 p.m. start with regards to your meal, the meal consumption. We're speaking about it really, truly being a 7 or a 6 p.m. start time. And again, this is just to remind you, remember that the event time starts when warm up begins. When a typical Warm up begins. Uh, sorry, I'm going to change that. When warm up begins at a typical one hour.
prior to a contest. Or you can say typically one hour prior to a contest. Remember that the event time starts when warm up begins at a typical one hour prior to contest. So um, you're gonna, just, just don't include E on that. So you have E on there on your sheet, just, um, Just cross it out, cross E out. I'm not going to give that to you. Okay, C, let me just give the rest to you. A timing for a dinner based pregame meal. This is for a 8 a.m. morning event. game time. Uh, we're talking about two pregame meals here. So two pregame meals. Uh, a dinner, which is a carbo load. Here's your pasta, moderate protein. Uh, and salad. So you just basically take what I what we covered before with your earlier pregame meal for a nighttime game. You just consume that later in the evening. So where it was a two to 3 p.m. Uh, timing where you consume it for your 7 p.m. game or your athlete 7 p.m. game or your your team 7 p.m. game if you're a coach or a trainer or whatever it might be, you uh, now just, uh, you just have that individual or those teams or whatever consume that meal for dinner. It doesn't really matter what time the dinner is. I mean, it should be early, like about 6 p.m., uh, 8 p.m., like between 6 and 8. Shouldn't it be later on? Um, but so your 6 p.m. start time, here it is, 6 p.m. meal start time. And no later. Then 8 p.m. Uh, meal finish time. 
And this is where you load up. I mean, really, really load up. Eat a lot. Um, you can eat more. You can eat even more than you know during uh, your your pregame meal, the two to six, two to three p.m. You eat a lot then too. Uh, but even we're still even saying like eat as much as you want. You really want to load up because you have a lot of time between your nighttime and then the next morning. It's almost like twelve hours compared to like three to four to six hours of the the other. Uh, earlier or for the 7 p.m. game start time so we really want you to load up load up as much as uh as much as possible you suggest your athletes to load up as much as possible then there's a breakfast meal here to consider now so it should be a 5 a.m to 5 30 a.m meal finish time is acceptable so really it should be a 4 30 to 5 a.m meal start time is ideal. Now this is really truly for performance. If you want to recommend the right type of food and the right timing for an athlete or for yourself for an 8 a.m. game to ensure top performance, the, the fuel is hitting the cells exactly at the right time to really allow you for contributing enough energy to, to optimally perform. Uh, this is the timing of, that would be recommended. Could you get up later, start your meal later? Could you go to Starbucks and get, I don't know, some type of egg sandwich or whatever because you're hungry? Yes, you could. It's going to, it's going to allow you to, to, uh, fulfill your satiety needs and all that. Uh, but, um, it's those fuels are not going to get to those cells of the body to really provide you the energy and the fuel that your body really needs to optimally perform, um, for that ADM game. Uh, but you'll be fulfilled enough to be able to where it doesn't hinder you to like you're hungry and you're performing all right so just just know that um and then lastly okay so and then lastly the the type of food so here we go so oatmeal okay so one cup of oatmeal uh, it equals about three to four servings. So that's just to give you an idea. One cup of oatmeal equals three to four servings. That's not saying that you should consume three to four servings or one cup. That's just saying that the, the one cup is giving you the information that it equals three to four servings. So... One third cup of oatmeal should be sufficient. A half a banana. This will give you some potassium. One to two slices of turkey bacon. Because it has salt. It's just a recommended turkey bacon is 
healthier for you than regular bacon. Could you technically have regular bacon? Sure. Uh, and then you, or you can put, um, pork. Bacon. I know we don't call it pork bacon, but I'm just going to put instead of, instead of putting bacon, bacon or real bacon or whatever, whatever you would call it. I just put pork bacon, pork based bacon. That's where normal bacon, regular bacon that many people, uh, may prefer over Turkey is, um, is may as comes from. Now, could you have eggs? Here's option. We'll just put option two here. Could you have eggs? Sure. Eggs with toast. Sure. That's not a bad option either. I would just recommend if you can go with oatmeal, go with it. Now, oatmeal, uh, here's some toppings, right? Some recommended toppings for oatmeal. Oatmeal with just oatmeal and nothing else on it is horrible, right? It's awful. I would never recommend, I, I can't eat oatmeal with just regular oatmeal. Um, uh, brown sugar. I don't know if you have more space on the bottom line. Brown sugar. Uh, raisins or cranberries. Dried cranberries. Dried, not just put dried in there somewhere. Um, and blueberries. These are the toppings. Uh, I'll just do added toppings. Starbucks has a very good uh, option now with oatmeal at Starbucks. You get so if you're short on time or whatever, that's also an option um, for for the oatmeal. Um, but eggs and toast option two, that's fine. I would stick. I would stay away from like pancakes. You usually, typically eat pancakes. Eat three or four pancakes or more. It's usually too much. Um, so one or two eggs with some toast. Add a banana and two slices, you know, some slices. You can have more turkey. It doesn't have to be one or two. It can be more turkey if you, more bacon if you'd like. But option eggs with toast and then, and then um, uh, three and four from below. Which means, let's do this. All right, and then the last thing is uh, three is another option. This is option three. Uh, protein smoothie, protein smoothie. I call it the protein smoothie snack. I'll have a video on that. I'll show it to you tomorrow. Um, that will give you that. That is if you had no time to consume food, to create food, to make food. You don't have time to go to Starbucks or whatever. You have just enough time to like put some stuff together and throw it in a blender and create it for yourself before you go. Um, so that's an option uh, that I'll cover tomorrow. Okay. So, um, just nothing to turn in today. Just just go with um, 
with that set of notes.